The Quakers have a tradition, a question that they ask early on to folks, and it goes something like this. When did Jesus become more than just a name to you? What a wonderful question that truly is. A question that each of us can ask ourselves in the season, this Easter tide, this 50 days when we get to reflect on the post-resurrection Jesus, on the amazing events that happened, the stories that are told, the truths that are revealed. When did Jesus become more than just a name to you? As I ever thought about this question, it was a bit of a challenge for me. I guess I'd have to say, I don't know exactly when it was, but it seemed to be pretty early on. There was something inside of me that was drawn, yes, drawn to the story of Christ. Even as a young child at eight or nine years old, I used to have the Bible right on my nightstand, not something we normally did as a family, but every night I would read at least one chapter out of the Bible. Luke was a very favorite gospel of mine. I would say probably John is the one that converted my heart most of all. But this power, this realization, this deeper understanding, when Jesus does become more than just a name, but something that defines who we are is of critical importance. Sometimes it can be helpful for us to look at that question or reflect on that question through the eyes of others. For those early disciples and apostles back at the very beginning when this was all very new and they didn't have anybody else to go to to ask about what their experience really was except each other, I think that they are stunned and startled at first afraid of the changes that are about to unfold. But as the realization grows, as their understanding expanded, their lives were changed. Certainly Peter's was, when we read in the book of Acts, kind of Luke's second book, Peter goes from this person who struggled to want to believe and understand and, and kind of be there for Jesus to an apostle who led his brothers in this new journey, which was the church. No longer seemingly unsure, Peter seemed to know what needed to be done. And I think it rested upon this. He had a witness of his very own of the impact that this resurrection had. And his world changed dramatically. He, not, he no longer seemed to have the doubts that he had before. He wasn't questioning and wondering. He was instead proclaiming and preaching. The reading that we have today is the first of the sermons, if you will, in the book of Acts. So we see a Peter who is convicted in his own heart, who is sure, and who wants to tell that story openly to people around him, people from all nations and from all backgrounds. From very early on, we understand that this gospel which is revealed and gifted to us is a gospel for all peoples, for all nations. What a wonderful reminder in this story for us today where we find ourselves. Sometimes I think People stumble upon this fact, this idea of Jesus of the resurrection. Can't we just kind of believe in a Jesus who is a really good guy? That might make us more palatable to our friends at a coffee hour or a wine and cheese party. Could we just not really be the whole like resurrection Jesus people? Don't they seem a little wonky out there? Doesn't science have something to say about that? Why do we have to be a people of the resurrection. The resurrection was a watershed moment in the history of humankind. The resurrection is the witness to say that what has happened in the world is of God's doing. And the worst that humankind could throw at God, God turns around and gives us his very best. He gave us his only son and would not allow him to see 
corruption, or decay. He was unjustly crucified, suffered horribly. But God in all of that said, you know, that might be your story, but my story is a story of love and grace and a gift of salvation. It is a story of God's overcoming and God's power and only Christ's right to reign. We cannot put ourselves into the place of God. We can't put him in a little box either. God will never be held by our convictions or understandings. God is a wonderful mystery that is beyond our comprehension, but by his grace, never beyond his reach. Our Lord and Savior came into this world not just to teach some really wonderful words of wisdom that we could live by, but to claim us as his people. I believe in the resurrection, not only because of what was told to me through the power of the Bible stories, through the gospel, but I believe in the resurrection because of the impact that Christ has had on my own life. I've had a complete shift in understanding and self-perception of who I am in the midst of this world and what really matters. Christ of the resurrection is a Christ who can overcome all. A really smart teacher might be somebody we could listen to for a while until we learned everything that they had to say, but we would move on. But we never move on from Christ because he's always far more than that. The re resurrection was God's witness to say, in his hands he holds the whole universe. In his hands he holds our world. And when we begin to understand that, to see our place within this world and to see God in his place in the heavens, it helps us, I think, to align ourselves in a way where we do find joy and peace. It isn't because of what Jesus taught that we are gifted with these things, but it is because of what Jesus did. The power of the resurrection for me is a witness that even in death, that is not the final word. And that is always the final word for humankind. We think oftentimes that that is the worst thing that could happen or that would be the end, but in God's witness, life and love are eternal. In the world that we find ourselves today, this time of sheltering, this time of not being able to gather as the body of Christ. It doesn't stop us from drawing closer to our Lord. It doesn't stop us from making and finding time to be in his presence, to ask him to reveal himself to us, to help us grow in our understanding and our faith. The sheltering in place does not stop us from reading our Bibles, from exploring the word, from sharing with each other, either through emails or phone calls or beyond. Instead, this is a wonderful time for us to ask ourselves that question. When did Jesus become more than just a name to you? Has he become more than just a name to you? And if not, why not? And if so, how so? I am humbled that God would call us as a people at all. We're so broken and we get so many things wrong, at least I know I do. And yet, in spite of that, our Lord reaches down from the highest heavens, from across the millennium, to call you and me into his kingdom, to surround us with his love, to allow us the gift of understanding and faith that helps us to understand whose we are in this creation. This time of sheltering will cease. 
I hope we don't emerge from it the same people we were when we entered into it. If so, I think we will have lost a wonderful opportunity. These days are difficult. Growth is hard. Change seems harder still. We know that when we emerge from this, it won't be exactly the same world it was before. How could it be? And yet, and yet, in the season of Eastertide, we can always and consistently be reminded that our Lord and Savior rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand, which means a position of power with God, in God, as God, the Holy Trinity, united, one, sacred. This is the Lord that we worship and adore. This is our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your Eastertide be blessed. Amen.